What's going on guys? Today we are starting a new series. It's going to be 10 minute tutorials. So basically this is going to be 10 minutes or less videos of quick tutorials of tools that you guys can use as a hacker and tools that you can use defensively as well. Now this first one probably won't take quite 10 minutes because it's pretty simple, but you can see here we're in our operating system. We're in Linux. So if you guys are familiar, um, we're going to use Metasploit for this one. So if you guys have used Metasploit, go ahead and like, subscribe the video and comment below. Let me know. But the big thing here is um, some of these tutorials will require a little bit of backend knowledge. That's how I'm going to keep them under 10 minutes for some of these tools. And some of them will require that um, you may do a little bit of research on your own, depending on if you have experience with certain things. Now, Metasploit, we're just going to open up the Metasploit framework console. And then you'll see, we'll go ahead and pull it up. So this will require that you guys have used Metasploit before. Otherwise, um, you could still do this. You're just not going to really understand what's going on. But so then the one we're going to look for. So if you guys have done this before, we can search. And we can actually search for, let's just search email and see what we get. All right. So we've got WordPress emails, emails, gather Outlook emails. Okay. Let's see. We may have to get a little bit more specific with the searching here. There we go, right there. That's what we want. Search engine domain email address collector. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to basically find emails for companies. So let's go ahead and use that one. Auxiliary gather search email collector. So we're going to say use auxiliary gather search. What was it? Email email collector. All right. So now if you guys have used Metasploit before, you know, that first thing we always got to do is show options. All right. So here's what we got to fill out. We've got to give it a domain name and we don't have to give it an out file, but we're going to anyway. So let's go ahead and set domain and we'll do something quick and easy like yahoo.com. Now I'm going to show you guys some tricks with this too. So it's setting, it's saying to set the domain name. Um, now keep, if you set like www.yahoo.com, it's not going to work. Um, it'll just give you zero results. And that's because what it does, the way it's written, it's taking whatever word you put and it's putting it after the at. So it's saying like, it's going to search for at whatever. So I found that it actually is the same if you put yahoo.com, you'll get a few results, but you won't get a ton. And that's because it's searching at yahoo.com. So it's using search engines. So what that means is you will have to have an email that in the search engine says exactly at yahoo.com. But if you search just Yahoo, so if we set just the domain at just Yahoo, right? we'll get the results we're looking for. Now, you can do this with any company. Keep in mind, because it is using OSINT, it is using public information. You can see here, it's gonna search Bing, it's gonna search Google, and it's gonna search Yahoo. Now, one thing I have noticed too, is it's not gonna give you every single um, thing that it finds, because it's gonna do a quick search. This is a quick search. So this would be like your entry, the first thing you're doing for a company. This is not gonna be, you you know, I gotta find emails, and I gotta, no, because, this is only giving you the quick results. This isn't giving you the actual um, hundredth page results on a on a Google page, right? So I would suggest after doing this, this will give you an entry point. This will start to build. You're going to start building up a case, right? And then from here, you could do some Google dorking to get deeper in and things like that. You could start looking for where this email also reaches out on the internet. So we're going to say set domain. We got that. Now we're going to set the out file. Now this can be whatever you want it to be. Let me see where we're at first. Okay. So we're going to go into our 10 minute tutorials. All right. So we're in our 10 minute tutorials and we're going to go ahead and we'll make a directory here and we're going to say email gathering. All right. And then we're going to go back in here and we're going to go into email gathering. All right, so we have nothing in it. Perfect. Now, we're going to show options. Make sure we've got our options set. All right, we need to set the, that out file. So what is the out file? It's literally just going to be where this file is saved, a name that it's going to store it at. So we're going to name it Yahoo 
um, emails.txt. Okay, welcome back, guys. So for some reason, um, I had to shut down uh, Metasploit and turn it back on. I'm not sure uh, what happened there, but oops, we'll go back into here. So now you'll see we have, let's see, where is it? Oh, I put it in one directory back. So we'll go ahead and open it here. You can see we have Yahoo emails.txt. If we open Yahoo emails.txt, you can see all the emails that it found at Yahoo, right? Now this seems like, yeah, obviously there's a ton of Yahoo emails, right? But the nice thing is, let's say you worked for Yahoo, right? And you had an internal domain. So let's say we wanted to go to hacker or hacker one.com, right? Well, I, I had it up earlier and we're going through and we find domains that have bug bounties on them, right? Now this is outside the scope of typical bug bounties, but I'm saying when you're doing a pen test, you have a domain, right? So if you put that domain and you start gathering a couple emails, what if some of those emails you notice are like admin or, you know, names of because you you're probably going to go to linkedin look at osa information and you're noticing some of those emails are users that have admin rights they're it administrators they're security administrators they're engineers they're analysts that type of stuff you're gonna if you find those emails here's the key to um OSINT, right like let's say this was a company and akam and you look on linkedin and there's a guy named adam cam right and then there's a guy named adam Canis, Canis 3, whatever that last name is, right? Let's say that's how they're formatting it. They're formatting it with first name or first letter and then last name at whatever domain you want. If you find that pattern, all you have to do is find out someone that works there and now you have their email address already, right? And you could start to build a list. So hopefully that makes sense to you guys because let's say, let's say you go to a company and you know for a fact they do this. They put first name, dot last name at yahoo.com or at whatever domain you want dot com right you now have a list of of email accounts okay now some companies will actually use that same email account or that same format as their login accounts so then it'll be first name dot last name as their login so once you find the pattern now anyone that you know that works there if you have their first name and last name you have their login account so keep that stuff in mind when you guys are doing this um, that's the whole point of gathering information like this. It's not to dig through the entire internet and find every single email because once you figure out the pattern that a company uses, if they use a pattern, you now have every email for anyone that works there. If you know their first name and their last name, if that's the pattern they're using. So hopefully this guys, this helps you guys. I'm going to try and keep these five to 10 minutes so that you guys can just go hop in, do them, knock them out and have fun with it. So thanks guys. I really appreciate the support and make sure you like subscribe and comment below if you've ever used this. Thanks.